So we met with the bass engineer we're working with. He'll be the one certifying basically the complete modification of this. So the, the change to the motor, uh, the change to where the, the weight will be and all the other safety requirements. And that's really interesting because there isn't just, uh, there isn't a rule book, there isn't a, you know, Australian design rules explicitly to what we're doing. So we're wanting to do this as at scale and we're wanting to do, you know, do this in multiple iterations. So thinking about how we create a modular way to do this that can work for both short and long wheelbase Land Rovers. And then particularly that's about what we do with the batteries, where they fit and importantly, how the weight is distributed. Um, the useful thing about these old Land Rovers is that the chassis are almost perfect for, for batteries. The body sits quite high. The seat boxes are usually here. You can see that they, this would be the, where the driver sits, basically above the fuel tank. And these fuel tanks are a really good indication of where a perfect place for batteries are. If you think about a, a modern electric vehicle like a Tesla, it is a skateboard platform, they'll call it. So batteries all along the, the lowest point of the car. And to some extent, we can emulate that. areas of rust. The main ones are in the front where the bull bar was and where uh, the original owner had mounted buckets of, of bait. He used to carry his bait behind the bull bar and that would have leaked out salt water over that. The other place is, is here on this outrigger. Uh, dirt collected back here on top of this fuel tank. Sat there, mud, water, dirt, grime and just ate through this outrigger. And then the rear cross member, which is a classic place for Land Rovers to rust. And that is, uh, that's pretty bad, and particularly from the back where the tow ball mounts, uh, it just is filled with dirt and then just eaten itself out from the inside. So we'll replace that, that rear cross member as well. So this is where we'll bolt the new electric motor to. This is the front end of the gearbox. There'd be the clutch plate here, which we'd keep, but in, this, in essence, the electric motor will bolt onto this with an adapter plate and spin this. And this is in gear at the moment. So you can see that spins, goes through the gearbox and comes out the, the transfer case. This is one of the many parts that shouldn't really have a lot of oil and dirt but does and has some interesting modifications like this hole that's just been cut in the bottom of the bell housing to access something maybe someone can tell me why you want to cut just that hole is it to adjust the clutch or something It's interesting how this was painted. It was originally a dark green, and what you can see on here is the original undercoat layer being the brown, and then the chassis here would have been black. But then when it's been painted that lighter green, which is also an original Land Rover color, 
they painted everything, including the chassis, which is a bit unusual. And then it was repainted in that, that more uh, juniper green. So you can see just how much space there is in the engine bay with everything pulled out. So the wires still coming from the dash. This is the brake and clutch system and steering system, which will remain, but almost everything else has gone. This is the original plate that mounted the battery and that's welded on. They might, we'll leave that for the moment. There might be some use for it. Um, the gearbox sort of finishes here and so we'd be mounting the electric motor in basically just here. And it'll come to like this far out and about this high. So it means we've got this like really large space in the engine bay above the motor and in front of the motor that we can fit batteries, we can fit all the other components that we need, charging modules, DC to DC converters, heaters, all those kinds of elements as well. And potentially maybe even some uh, lockable storage. So the next step for us is to pull everything apart. We need to get every component off because we're going to sandblast the chassis. We're going to clean every other component, replace all the seals, all the bearings, all the, all the bushings, um, and get it back to as pristine a condition as we can before we start adding the new parts back on.